Hello, I'm Ken Ramsey, pastor of Wesley United Methodist Church in Morgantown. Every Sunday, people gather here and experience the joy of proclaiming, lifting up, and celebrating that Jesus Christ is Lord. We want to share this exciting good news with the larger community through this program. As you watch, picture yourself as a participant in worship. Listen for the message that God may have for your life. And most importantly, open yourself to a new encounter with the living God who loves you, cares for you, and desires for you to follow Jesus. Come, let's give thanks and rejoice in the Lord together. Welcome to Worship at Wesley. Join us today as we hear Dr. Ramsey's message, Get Some New Clothes. God is good? All the time. All the time. God is good. Our youth choir are with us this morning. They are in Troit. He never failed me yet. Trust and never doubt, Jesus will surely bring you out, he never fails. 
Amen. We appreciate our youth choir and the gifts that they bring among us to set the tone for our worship today. Let's stand and join together in our call to worship that you'll find printed in your bulletin. Let us be joyful before the Lord and lift up his name. All power and majesty belong to our God. Awesome is God in the sanctuary. He gives strength to his people. Let us sing praises to the Lord and worship his holy name. Our hymn of praise number 162, Alleluia, Alleluia. our heads in prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the opportunity of being in your house today. Focus us upon Jesus Christ. Guide and direct us by your Holy Spirit. Empower us to be your people, that the worship we offer in here may translate into service in the world. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated.
It's a real pleasure this morning to take a few moments in the context of worship and recognize our graduates. We want to this morning recognize our high school graduates as well as the names that we have of our uh, college, uh, college graduates. And we, um, we never bat a thousand, so at the end, uh, I will say, if you're graduating and I didn't read your name, please come up and join us because we have a gift for you and uh, we also want to have a prayer of thanksgiving. First of all, I want to read the names of our uh, graduating seniors uh, for high school. It's quite a class uh, this year and I'll just have them come and uh, line up along the altar rail here as I read your name if you would. Stephen Boone, Nathan Boone, John Baker, Sarah Edgar, Philip Hurst, Lauren Bain, Lauren Hart, Yale Mendelson, Patrick Lewis, Andrew Rhodes, you guys may have to spread down a little more there, uh, Katie Gallagher, Travis O'Neill, Samantha Johnson, Virginia Chambers, Christina Sierra. Fifteen names I read. Now let's see how many we got up here. Move over this way a little bit, Yale. Yeah. We got most of them, didn't we? Jason, those books, Come Thirsty, down the aisle here, and then we'll wait to come thirsty down the aisle there. See if he'll run out. While they're distributing the books to our high school graduates, uh, any of our college graduates that are here, I want you to come up and join me as well. We'll crowd in, don't worry. Uh, Jill Rogers, Elias Stewart, Josh Stone, Laura Stone, Allie Spiker, Hannah Swecker, some of them uh, Masters and as Doctorate of Education, Beverly, Beverly Kirby, Jenny Lotus, Jody Styers, Kristen Waters. Why don't you all come on up, any, any, any of our colleagues. Come on over this way, Jill. I want to I uh, have the college and, and grad students stand over on this side. Anybody else that made it? Uh, Elizabeth Wiegand. Elizabeth, get over here. You weren't going to get out of that, were you? See, all these good people that know you, right? <laughs> now, if you graduated, and I somehow, we didn't get your name, like I said, we never bat a thousand, I want you to come up, be bold. It's a nice book, it really is. Uh, come up and join us. And that goes for high school graduates as well. Are there other college graduates among us or, or grad school that are graduating this year? Come forward if you want. Anybody? <laughs> okay. Come on up. Anybody? Yeah, yeah, come up. Good. Great. Now, let me say a word, and then I want to have a prayer of thanksgiving. On this side, uh, um, Sweet a Cure for the Common Life by Max Licato, Ed, and Jason. I appreciate your all's assistance. The high school graduates have uh, come thirsty, of course, by Max Licato, uh, because many of these uh, people I've had in Sunday school, and, uh, and all of them, have listened to probably way too many sermons, uh, in which I uh, quoted from Max Licato. So now, as you may not be here, uh, you may be going somewhere else to school and so forth. You'll have your own, uh, your own copy. Uh, the idea, uh, guys, here on the high school graduate side, now the idea is to move from this side of the sanctuary to this side <laughs> of the sanctuary, right? So, uh, you know, it can be done, <laughs> and we want you to do that. Seriously, uh, first of all, to our graduating seniors, I want you to know at a personal level uh, that it has been a true joy as a part of my journey here at Wesley Church. And I've been here 11 years, so uh, those of you who were here from the beginning were quite small uh, when I first ar arrived here. But I, it has been a personal joy uh, for me to share the journey of faith with you, uh, to get to know you, um, not only your pastor, but I uh, like to think of you as friends, and we've shared a lot, a lot of things along the journey. And I'll never forget those moments. I hope that you never forget those moments. And later on in adult life, if you find yourself in one of my sermon illustrations, you'll know that it was a very meaningful time that we had together. To our college students and grad students, I know this is an important part of your journey in life in general. And some of you have gone on now to graduate school. Some of you have completed that. But at any rate, it is still a vital transition and a wonderful time in your life. And we celebrate with you. Uh, as a part of this community of faith. Let's bow our heads and have a prayer together. Lord God, we give you thanks for the joy of the journey. 
We give you thanks for transitions, thresholds, new opportunities, new beginnings. We know that in and through all things, you are the God of all. And so I pray that your guidance would be near to our high school graduates, as well as our university graduates. I pray that you would watch over them, provide for their every need according to the gifts of your Holy Spirit. I pray that your blessing would rest upon them in such a way that they would never stray from the path of discipleship, but that it would remain strong in their faith and focused on Christ. That even as they continue on the journey, that it would be a journey of faithfulness and a journey of service to you. In the holy name of Christ our Lord, we give you thanks. Amen. Stay right there, guys. I'm going to greet on behalf of the church. First of all, let's greet them together. As they take their seats, I'm going to give them a hearty handshake. We've not welcomed one another yet, so we're going to stand and just take a moment and mingle. Uh, welcome one another to the service, then you may be seated. Start right here.
morning. Hear the word of God about the ascension of our Lord as it's contained in the Gospel of Luke, <laughs> chapter 24, starting at verse 44. There is a Bible in your pew, and if you want to follow along with the reading, it's on page 84 of the New Testament. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words, which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that very thing written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is God's word for us today. And all the people said, thanks be to God. As Jesus approached the moment of his ascension in which he would return to the Father, he promised to the disciples new clothing. Did you hear it? New clothing. Wait in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. He promised them the clothing of the Holy Spirit. That is, that they would be attired and covered with the power and the presence and the promise of Jesus' continuing presence with them. And just as Jesus then invited his disciples to receive this new clothing, he says to us, get some new clothes. Get some new clothes. And the clothing that I offer you is the Holy Spirit. Be clothed with the power that comes by opening yourself to the Spirit's direction in your life. What is it that distinguishes this clothing that Jesus offers us through the promise of the Holy Spirit? Well, first of all, the clothes fit who we are. The clothes that Jesus offers us, the clothing, fits who we truly are intended to be. Nothing worse than ill-fitting clothes. Nothing more comfortable than perfect-fitting clothes. And friends, the perfect fit that God has for you is the promise of His Holy Spirit. That is, the one way, the one way that you will discover your true identity, the one way that you will discover who you were intended to be is by opening yourself to the promise and presence of the Holy Spirit. Read a little story by Paul Elkin. He was paying tribute to a school teacher that he had. And he went on and described many of her methods and her personality and had nothing but accolades for this school teacher. But the part that I clipped out was a closing sentence. Paul Elkin said, Looking back, what strikes me the most is that she seemed to know us not just on the surface, but at the our core. What a tribute. She seemed to know us not just on the surface, but she seemed to understand the core of who we were, is what Paul Elkin was saying. And friends, the one person who understands the core of who you are and the promise of who you can be is God who has revealed himself in Jesus Christ and offers his continuing presence with us 
through the clothing of the Holy Spirit. So get some new clothes. Be clothed with the Spirit. It always fits. It always fits who you are, who you, who you were intended to be. Secondly, these clothes are good for all seasons. The clothing that Jesus offers us is clothing that's good for all seasons. Now, I'm not much into fashion, don't know much about uh, fashion attire, but I know that it's very hard to find a piece of clothing that's so versatile that you could actually wear it regardless of the season. There are a few pieces of clothing like that. But I do know this when it comes to our spirituality. The clothing of the Holy Spirit, that is being clothed with the power from on high, it's good for all seasons. That is, all of the ages, all of the stages of life, all of the seasons of life, a presence, a power that will be with you and give you the strength that you need in those seasons of life, provide for your needs regardless of the season of life, that comes, my friends, through the God's gift of the Holy Spirit to each and every one of us. I remember some years ago I was visiting an elderly lady well into her 90s. And I was talking with her back and forth a little bit and finally, in the course of the conversation, she said to me, you know, you'll be my age someday. And I remember smiling and saying, well, I can only hope. <laughs> I can only hope. And then she got a kind of a smile on her face because she had a wonderful sense of humor and she said, do you think you'll be as good looking as I am? And I said again, well, I can only hope. I can only hope. And then there was kind of a pause in the conversation. And she looked at me and she said, let me tell you something about growing older. And I waited. And she kind of pointed at me. And she said, don't let anyone steal your humor. That's what she told me. Don't let anyone steal your humor. That was some stage, life stage advice and sage advice, I might add, from that person who had lived through more seasons and stages than I had. She went on to say, because the grumpy old men I know were grumpy young men too. And she said, the grumpy old ladies I know were grumpy young ladies too. Somebody stole their humor along the way. I thought, here's a person who's discovered something about the vitality of life. Here's someone who's discovered something about attitude, something about being positive, something about the power of laughter and joy. And because I know her, I know the source of that attitude and joy and laughter was her faith. I know that she was clothed with power from on high that she had been clothed with the presence of the Holy Spirit. And because the Spirit was present in her life, she was able to maintain that kind of attitude and outlook in all the seasons of life. The clothing that God offers us is Holy Spirit. Clothing for all seasons. Finally, this clothing is clothing that always makes a statement. Clothing that makes a statement. Now, again, I'm not much into physical fashion, but they tell me, those who write about these things, that clothes make a statement. Some clothes say, look at me. Some clothes say, I want to hide. Some clothes say, I'm on the top of the world. Other clothes say, I'm grieving and I need pity. I didn't know until I read that clothing could be interpreted that way. But I do know, I do know that when we are clothed with the Holy Spirit, we are called to make a statement on behalf of Jesus Christ. Jesus said this in Luke's Gospel reading. Did you hear it? You are witnesses of these things. God sent His Son that He might suffer, and on the third day He rose from the dead so that repentance and forgiveness of sins might be preached to all people, then you are witnesses of these things. In other words, you're called to make a statement about the promises and power of God. As a disciple, as a follower of Christ, being clothed with the Holy Spirit means that clothing helps you, empowers you to make a statement. You know, 
when, when some large event happens, a lot of times the person that's in charge or is seen as in charge, oftentimes the media will ask them, would you like to make a statement? Would you like to make a statement concerning this? And sometimes they'll say, no comment. No comment. I wonder in our world today how it would be different if we as Christian disciples would quit taking the no comment option and start making the statements of witness that we're called to make on behalf of Christ. Because many times in our lives when we've had the opportunity to speak up with a word or to offer a deed in the name of Christ, we've opted for the no comment option. But friends, if you are clothed with the Spirit's power, this new clothing that God invites you to wear, part of being clothed is that those clothes, the Spirit's clothing, makes a statement. So, disciple, Jesus Christ, follower of Christ, would you like to make a statement concerning your life? Someone came up to you, would you like to make a statement? Yes. Yes, I would like to make a statement. I would like to state clearly that regardless of what occurs in life, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. I would like to make a statement that regardless of how deep, deep or dark the valley may seem, that God's presence is there with you and promises to strengthen you. I would like to make a statement. Regardless of the grief, regardless of the brokenness, I serve a God who can comfort and hold and heal and give hope. Would I like to make a statement? Would you? Yes, I would. Through our words, through our attitudes, through our actions, are we making that witness are we allowing the clothing of the Holy Spirit to make the statement that might point other people to experience the love of God in Jesus Christ? Friends, I pray that you're open to the possibility of getting some new clothes. Because next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, and we're waiting. We're waiting that we might be clothed with the power, and the presence, and the promise of God's Spirit. Will you receive His gift of new clothing today? Let us pray. Lord God, open us again to Your wondrous gift that we might not only receive Your promise, but be empowered to be Your witnesses through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We reflect on this scripture and uh, the message that it has. We invite the youth choir to come at this time. They're going to share a song that's called Witness.
One of the ways that we visibly extend our witness out beyond these walls and into our community is when we take the time to worship the Lord together in giving. And so if the ushers would come at this time, we'll receive the Lord's tithes and our offerings as Wesley Fringers shares the offertory with us.
Number 95 in our hymnals as we stand and present our gifts and the elements of communion. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for the way in which you have journeyed with us as your people. And there were times when our love failed, but your love, it remained steadfast. You continued to call to us and to hold forth your promise of salvation. And when the fullness of time was come, you sent forth your own Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus healed the sick, ministered to the poor, ate with sinners, cured the blind. He announced that the acceptable year of your kingdom had dawned. Today we remember Jesus on the very night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, This bread is my body, broken for you. As oft as you eat of this bread, do so in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had supped, he gave it to his disciples and said, This cup is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As oft as you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of salvation in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves again as a living sacrifice on his behalf. We pray, Lord, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us who've gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the entire world, looking toward the day when we will all feast at your heavenly banquet table. In the name of Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Visiting with us today, please know that by virtue of your faith in Jesus Christ, you are welcome to come and receive this sacrament to your comfort. As we come, if you'd like to pause at the altar rail for a moment of prayer, you may do that. There's not room there. Remember that Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. You return to your pew to remain in an attitude of prayer there by the side aisles. You'll note there are some canisters in which you can deposit your cups. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us commune together.
In this very room. In this very room. 
prayer after receiving that you'll find printed in your bullet. Let us pray together. O oh Lord, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you show your love to us. Empower us by the Spirit to offer this love to all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our parting hymn, number 664, sent forth by God's blessing. thankful for your presence and worship for the testimony to God's power and God's kingdom that you give simply by choosing to be present to make your offering of praise and thanksgiving in this place. We want to remind our college students as you leave, please pick up a snack pack for finals week. If you would like to take one to a friend, that's okay too. We'd love to have you do that. So some persons will be distributing those as you leave the various exits of the church and we hope that your finals week goes well. And we hope that you have a good break and look for you back in the fall. We send you forth as the people of God, having been clothed with the power from on high. Let us go forth in the power of God's Spirit to share the good news of Christ with all. In His name we go forth to serve. a special invitation for you to attend Sunday services at Wesley Church. Early worship is held at 8.30 a.m., Sunday school is at 9.30, and late worship begins at 11 a.m. If you are unable to attend one of these services, then join us on this same station, Mondays at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 11 a.m. for Worship at Wesley. Worship at Wesley is produced by the WCVM team at Wesley United Methodist Church. If you would like more information about Worship at Wesley or other programs at Wesley Church, you can write us at 503 High Street, Morgantown, West Virginia, 26505. Until next time, may the Lord bless you, keep you, and give you peace.